Okay, I'm back for part two of this recording. And in this part, um, in part one, we discussed VirtualBox and the VirtualBox configuration you need to do um, to set up uh, internal networking. In this part, we're going to actually set up the internal networking. Um, I originally wanted to set this up in real time, but it just takes too long. So I'm going to kind of do a little bit of demo and a lot of showing you or and a lot of telling you what I did. Okay, if we go over here, um, the first thing we have here is, well, let me show you a little bit about what I did here. Let's bring up this machine. This is a new fresh machine. And remember, um, as soon as this is up, <laughs> Okay, in the case of CentOS, I did not bother to add the um, um, guest add-on, guest editions. Maybe I should have given the amount of time I actually use, actually end up using CentOS, but I didn't. And it doesn't much matter uh, for what I'm using CentOS for. Okay, while we're here, let's go back over here and remind ourselves of exactly what we try, our goal is to do. Here we have what should have been labeled CentOS 01 machine. That is our router. This is CentOS 02, which is a machine connected to our router. And this over here, we're building a machine, CentOS 03. Um, and maybe I'll, depending on how it goes, maybe I'll use that as, a, you know, maybe I'll make a second router there. Yeah, it's a little weird to have two new routers on the same network, but actually I could do that. All I, if I wanted to make this machine use our new machine as a router instead of using our old machine as a router, all I have to do is go in and change the default gateway and then it should work. And, you know, the advantage of having two routers like that on the network, I suppose, would be if one goes down, you've got another one in waiting that is pretty easy to use. So, you know, I don't know. And what I do is I'm going to hard code all, of, well, I'm going to hard code most of the, um, IP numbers uh, with static IPs instead of using DHCP. I could use DHCP, but I'm not going to. Okay. Um, remember, this is on the green network. So I go on here. And I'm already installed as a user because I cloned myself from before. Um, and this comes up. And then I'll show you kind of how I set things up. Um, I have a file that I made way ahead of time that I put onto the uh, master machine that I cloned that has a lot of the commands that I should type to bring in the net bring up the network and uh, so I can copy and paste those rather than having to type those in by hand. Let's get up a um, terminal here. And another terminal. And let's go, whoop, let's go down here. And, oh, and I have a guy here called Desire to Learn uh, Spring Term 
Uh, and I think there's something down here called Network AIDS. And down in that, I've got a file called, um, I think the file I want is commands um, VMSH. So I will bring that guy up in Emacs. Yes, Emacs is not installed, I believe. I don't think Emacs is installed on um, um, CentOS by default, but it is on my CentOS by default. OK, and then I'm going to push these down in different um, um, workspaces. So I, I've got them separated in different workspaces. And let me go down to this workspace. And then let me go down to, oh, I've got two guys here. Let's bring this guy up, and we'll copy this down into a new workspace. If you notice, I like workspaces. I feel really handicapped <coughs> when I'm working in an operating system without workspaces. <coughs> OK. I'm down here. In fact, if you notice on my OpenSUSE down below in the lower left-hand corner, I've got room for eight workspaces. And I know exactly where everything's supposed to go within those eight workspaces. OK, a lot of the commands I need to type in to configure networking, I'm going to have to be root. So I'm going to become root right away. So I am root right here. Now, if I go up to the first workspace, I've got a, um, whoops, that was not what I wanted. I've got the programs that I've written. First thing I need to do is uh, step one, I do my initial commands to set up the router. If I'm setting um, CentOS 08, um, if I'm setting CentOS 803 up as a router, then I've got to do commands such as, well, I've got to get it onto the network. OK, so let me go down to um, um, down here. The first thing I want to type is uh, ifconfig. Now, there are three ways to configure, three sets of commands you can use to configure networks. Uh, Unix and Linux have a uh, what I call a hard and fast rule. <laughs> if there's one way to do things, there's got to be 14 ways. Um, there are a lot of ways to do things, all sorts of things in, in um, Unix, because I consider it to be a library as opposed to a, um, um, a how-to book. Um, yeah, some operating system is very simple. There's one way to do things. A Unix, there is not. So there's three ways to set up your networking that I, well, no, there's more than that. But there's three ways I'm going to discuss uh, from a command line. The old way people used a command called ifconfig to set up their network. And then they used a command called route to set up the routing table for the network. Um, those are kind of old and antiquated commands, but I still use them. And I was going to switch to a more modern system, except I find most of the world seem, still, seems to still be using those. Those were originally set up for IPv4, but they have been upgraded and enhanced for IPv6. Almost every Linux distribution still has those commands and probably will for the foreseeable future. There are a couple exceptions. I believe, uh, I, I don't believe I use it so often, I know. OpenSUSE 
does not have the IF config command anymore unless you install it yourself or the route command. Um, and a lot of people use, I, I think they use route 6 if you're doing IP, if you're doing IPv6 instead of IPv4. Okay. And um, um, I have, maybe Kali Linux does not have IP, uh, the IF config command either. Um, I don't know. Some other distribution I recently worked on did not have that command. Every other distribution I've worked on in the last couple months, oh, last couple years, has that command. Uh, Nopix, CentOS, Red Hat, Fedora, um, um, Ubuntu, Linux Mint. Um, oh, uh, what's um. Smoothwall, IP Fire. Uh, believe me, those are common commands, so I continue to use them, as does much of the world. Now, alternatively, you can use the IP command to set up both your I, uh, to set up both the network addresses and to set up the routing tables. The your book um, seems to use the nmcli command and that's every distribution has that command as well they have both the ip command and they have the let network manager cli command any of those work um okay so if i would want to set up a address on here i would type in now, the way I type these in, though, is remember I kept these commands up here. So I just go up here and get, whoop, and get a copy of the command like this. And then I go down here. I copy the command into place, and then I have to go back and edit the command. I suppose um, I should not use the address, the 01, because that was actually set up for the other computer. So I already have a computer on this network with that address. So I'll use 3, uh, because that's a free address. All the other things in there were, let's see, up here, if we look at our results of the first IP config, it said, that I have a card there and there's no address. So we're going to use IP config to give an address to that um, connection. And we have, a, that's a proper network mask, that's a proper um, um, broadcast. I don't think you even need to put the broadcast, but you probably did in 1990 when I started using it, or 1980 something when I started using it. I, I don't know. Anyway, I always put it. And then you can set up a route. Whoop. Well, let's go back up here. Um, the route command is what? Uh, basically, you know, do you need a route? Well, I, you know, you do. But as an example, let me ping. Um, let's see, I said 192.168. 8.0.1 is still on, is already on the network. Oh, wrong address. You, and if I ping that, yes, indeed, I can I, I I can contact things. Things are good. The problem is is I don't have a default address. So if I send something out to ping 10.0.0.12. Um, which is actually um, in the last part I said that was the address of my of the computer running all of this that's wrong that's the, it's the, actually the address of a server I have on my network but if I ping that there's no way on earth I could get to it now there's a lot of well see it because I do have to make I do have to tell it where to send addresses that aren't on the network. 
And I do that with the route command, which is up here. Whoops. And because 192.168.10.1 is the network router, that's the address I want. I do not want to change that address. That is the address I want. Actually, if I am on that computer, since that is a router, I do not want to make that the gateway um, I actually don't want to type in a well I don't want to type this in as the route command <laughs> this should be the route command used on every machine in the network except the router itself because the router itself has a second network card and you want the you want its default rate route to go to um, well it will go to the cable modem or the the, the network router that it sees so um and you would if you did type that in you would live to regret it because communications wouldn't be right if if you type that in on the router itself um of course you can always delete that by instead of using add you use d d e l for delete and then that gets rid of it Okay, that does that. Now look what happens when we do um, that. I pinged my uh, my server someplace out on um, my home network, and it gets there. Okay, uh, indeed, I think I could even do. Let let me go to a safer machine here. I I don't want to be root when I do all these commands. I'll go to this machine, SSH, X, Dmandel, at, um, ten dot zero dot zero dot one two. And I am on another machine here, if you can see. Whoop. And I am indeed on another machine, something called SCO302. Where it ever got that name from probably has a long, long history that I don't want to go into. So suppose I'd like to bring up an application on that machine. I might have one called XIs. OK. Now, it's interesting. Remember, this application is actually running on the server off in Never Never Land. It's not actually running on my local virtual machine or even my local hardware machine. It's running on a server off in Never Never Land. This could be running on a server across the world. And the truth is, I have developed software. I have. Um, administrated machines mostly I've developed software using machines I've never I've never seen I developed a lot of software uh, well for a craze and I've the only time I have physically seen a craze is when I was on vacation in uh, Denver, in Boulder Colorado uh, I think that was actually the cray that I had developed software for, but uh, I've developed software, for, uh, but but in essence, I never saw the machine. I have also did a lot of software for a um, on HP UX, and I did not have access to an H, a local HP UX machine. I used a machine in New Mexico, um, and um, man. I developed software for an IREX machine, SGI IREX, and uh, I didn't have access to one of those, but it was it was just across the building. So uh, anyway, that's cool.
or you can type in the heck commands from scratch but I do recommend keeping a it's sometimes keeping a copy of the machine uh, of the commands because if you're going to bring up a lot of different computers it, it is handy you know even if you have to type the commands in every time if you can't if you can't write a script that will do what you want it's useful just to keep the commands in a file so you can uh, copy and paste and and then edit what you copied and pasted um, okay whoops now I'm going to go to a local copy of this file just to go through the file and see what we've got in this file uh, let me go down to I've got a local copy of the file actually running on my hardware machine um, um, that is here and it's a little more up to date than the file that I have on the machine now in oh I forgot one other thing now I made when I type the if config command that does not make those changes permanent in fact neither does the IP command or the um, uh, NM CLI command they make the changes take effect right now but they're not permanent if I really want to save those changes so every time the machine boots it has those changes then I would have to edit this file or there are a number of commands depending on the distribution you're using but there's one called NM TIU I think it is that brings up a little cursors window that lets you type all that information in and it then writes it into the file and everything is up to date um, the other and and most of the distributions have some sort of uh, user interface that lets you do that um, actually Red Hat and CentOS I don't think do but um, many just you know like um, Ubuntu would uh, Linux Mint would um, and actually Asus has something called Yatch Yatch 2 that will let you um, trying to think of Debian but I, I I don't recall anything in either Debian or um, or Nopix that will let you do that but um, but what you can do is you can always go in and edit this file here like you do in your textbook and so if we go in so we go in and edit this file and we add well you you may have to add the following commands or you may not have to you may have to modify some of them I think most of those commands will be there but like the address will be wrong uh, you probably have to change um, the boot pro proto is probably says something like auto or DHCP you'll probably have to change that to static um, everything else is probably there already so anyway just modify it according to that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this I'm going to try and put this file in the um, um, YouTube um, footer and um, if not it will be on my desire to learn site <laughs> but uh, yeah I, I some which way I can get this file to people okay oh and it, another way of changing addresses of course is just simply to edit that file and reboot well reboot sounds a little harsh that sounds like I'm working in a Windows environment but what you can do is just simply restart the network manager that will reread the file you just edited and the changes will take effect um, I never do it that way but you know it, there's nothing wrong it, it's a good way of doing it okay step two step two in building this network is 
Uh, we just supposedly just did these changes to the, um, the, the, the like the zero one or the zero three to the router. Okay, you just did those changes to the router. So now, and the way the uh, yeah. Okay, so now go to the client machine and do the same changes. So you're going to uh, CentOS 08, um, CentOS 802, and you're doing basically the same changes. You're adding the address, and in this case, we'll use 192.168.10.2 as the address of the machine this machine and um, and you do basically you do just exactly what we did before um, with changing the the numbers oh this of course uh, freezes my screen every few minutes um, locks my screen every few minutes unless I change the lock uh, the lock time okay and then you make the same changes and you make uh, in the um, network configuration file and you make that permanent and then once you, you might want to reboot your machines and just check that everything's the same. You can check by pinging between those two machines, or if you put up um, uh, like um, oh SSHD the SSH uh, the SSH server on say the router, you should be able to route. You should be able to get to that machine. Let's see if we can. I don't know if I put that up or not. Let's see, we're going to go back to our client machine here, and we will go to SSH minus X. Demandle at ten dot no 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 one ninety two dot um one sixty eight dot ten dot one It looks like I put up the SSH server. By default, that's down, but of course, you know, that's something I use so often that it is up. And I can see by my IP address. Let's see, if I do IP IF config and I pipe that into egrep192, maybe I get something. Okay, it looks to me like my address is um, this guy. Oh, yeah, that's the address, right? So I must be on the right machine. And then it's got another address for some reason that we'll go into in a moment. Okay, um, log out again. Now, next thing, going back here. Is step three, if I want to go to my, uh, if I want to set one of these machines up as a router, like I would, if I wanted to set um, uh, the 03 machine up as a router, I would go to the 03 machine and I would take it down. And then I would go back. So let's take this machine down. I must be. Uh, Okay, shut this machine down. And you're going to ask some funny questions here, but that's okay. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this machine down. I'm going to go back into um, network settings or into settings. I'm going to go to network settings. And I am going to add a new card by enabling a new network adapter. And I'm going to set that to bridged mode so I can get out of the network directly. So this machine now has two NIC network cards in it. And if I look at a, a um, oh, there's ways of cheating, but I don't like to cheat. If I look at a desktop machine, it will mean it will actually have two network cards in it. Um, like the machine I often use as a hardware um, firewall has four network cards in it. And at least in the old days, it was easy to buy cards that would have up to four RJ11 connectors uh, for network cables on them. Um, actually, I think I've seen ones with a lot more than that. They were kind of expensive, but yeah. I don't know if they still make them or not. They, they must because people still build firewalls. Um, it's possible to make one NIC card do double duty, but I don't like doing that. Um, okay, anyway, we added a adapter. We're going to add that as bridged mode. I'll leave everything else default. Okay, now I will reboot my machine. And once again, it will take a little bit of time to come up. I apologize, but I can't help that. Um, and I will say the reason I do this in two steps is if I would just add all of my network cards, and sometimes I have quite a few network cards in a machine. Um, and if I I, it, when it's a physical machine, I often add them one card at a time, kind of, or maybe a couple cards, because um, it is difficult to tell what interface goes with which um, which little connector. Um, you can get them mixed up very easily, so then you don't know how to address things when you're on the computer. Okay, as an example. Oh, you know, I didn't modify this, so I don't have any addresses again, but that's okay. I should have modified this. So, um, wait a second for this to come up. I suppose I could pause the video, but go out and get another cup of coffee. Okay, I ignore this failed connection. It doesn't seem to mean anything, but. And I'll bring up, um, at least I'll bring up one terminal. Uh, we're not going to go through and do all of this because it takes a long time. But let me just simply outline here. Um, if I do ifconfig, now if I had set things up right before, if I had mon if I had actually edited the um, ifconfig dash connection file, then this address here, this would have had the proper address. Now the reason I tend to take the machine down and add the network card after I've configured the first one is so that I know the name of the new card. Otherwise I've just got two cards and I've got two names and I don't know how to figure out which name is which. Now, I, actually, you can do that by experimenting with IP addresses until you find the right name. And the truth is, that's the way I sometimes do it. You type in the IP numbers, or in the case of hardware, I just swap cables a lot until I find the right connection. But the other way of doing it is just add the cards uh, 
with time and then you'll get a new name you know the new name is the one to configure and so you know I should be able to configure that with something like uh, well uh, DHCP um, here's the, it says how to configure this here right here IF config and then this guy let's go back here Okay, I've got to become a root. And if I go D H C client And then the name of the interface, that should give me an address. Hopefully. Now let's do ifconfig. That gets me the name of the client, and there it is. And notice that is a strange address. That is an That goes outside of the internal network. So that address is... Well, if my machine is over here, that address is a direct connection between the cable modem and the um, um, and my machine. Of course, physically it goes through the uh, through my physical machine, but logically it's a direct connection. Okay, and so that means I should be able to do things like ping. There we go. And actually, the DHCP probably set up things like my, um, uh, it would have set up my DNS servers, I hope. It did. It would have set up my, um, um, uh, well, it would have set up a number of things. It would have given me a, an address, set up my uh of my uh, DNS servers it might have even oh it would have set up my default gateway and uh, it might even give my computer a name although I always override that to make sure it doesn't do that but yeah uh, but a DHCP server might do that as part of its service okay well that's the way we would do things then then of course you'd have to go in and make those changes once again in the network configuration file. So I would go in and we'll do it with VI. Networking. No, network scripts. Oh. Um, there isn't one here. Okay, this is my network script. This is the default. Remember, I did not edit the thing. I should have edited that, and this would be the... the I'm now working on the ENPS3 script. This should have been changed to static, and I should have put in the IP address and all of that stuff. This, um, and notice though, that um, if I go down here, whoops. There should also be a script for, um, network config dash e n p zero s eight it's not there so what i need to do if i'm setting this up as a router i need to go back and create that uh, file and enter and put in the following things. 
I think that's enough. Yeah, if you put in these commands, that's probably uh, that's probably enough to do the whole thing. Uh, everything else will de use defaults, and it's fine. Uh, but the file needs to be there and needs to tell it to use DHCP. Okay, that and uh, or uh, or of course you could enable that with by restarting the network manager, but. We want that file there, so every time you reboot, you get that. Okay, next thing is more of step three. I took a break here because at this point, it's a good time to go off and do a lot of um, testing of your machine. Um, when you're setting up a network, test, test, test. Actually, when you write software, test, 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 test. Um, test as you go. Uh, your so you know your software your network should be so good that if they bring in a professional tester to look at things they should never find an error um, the reason I say that is errors are fastest to catch and fastest to fix as you create them the longer an error goes in either software or hardware the more expensive it is to fix so even if you spend several several times more time um, doing things when you do um, testing and quality assurance as you do the job, it will save money in the long run by not having to fix something that is dreadfully old. Um, I remember once I wrote a piece of software that got used by a lot of people all over the country and I uh, this was mathematical software it was solving a um, uh, huge sets of linear equations using Gaussian elimination and a, a very special structured um, um, matrix uh, situation so I could speed the process up a lot then just doing dumb Gaussian elimination. And, um, you know, I had moved on to a new job that I had been in several years after I wrote this thing, and suddenly somebody came to me and said, you know, I found an error. I think, I think, uh, what, uh, would you look at your code? I think there's an error in it. And, you know, man, I, I had a number of sleepless nights. I mean, just the idea that so many people had been using my code and it had the horrible error in it. Uh, what I had is I had this big, huge term that was um, I had this I had this big, huge term, and um, and I think I took a minus, I subtracted the term. And it was actually a minus times a minus times a minus times a minus or something. In a way, I had the wrong sign on the term. It was wrong. And it, it, it subtracted something it should have added or it added something it should have subtracted. And then, you know, I spent I don't know how long analyzing that to... Um, and fortunately, I, in the end, I found out that that term was almost always zero, and things just went really bad if it wasn't zero on those rare occasions. So I think, you know, I think it was okay. I don't think um, we sent any ships to the bottom of the ocean because of it or anything like that. But, um, but it didn't, you know, it cost me a lot of pain and... And it was relatively cheap, but still, it cost a lot of pain and it cost me a lot of time that, you know, had I caught that in the first place, I, it would have been so much faster. <laughs> and I've I found that throughout my whole career, it's better to catch things as soon as you can. Do mistakes still get through? Yeah, they do. But, but, uh, um, But they get through some more get through some people than other people, and I'm saying be one of those people that not much gets through. Okay. Anyway, going back here, um, after we uh, do our testing, we get back and 
we go back to the router and on the router you need to make sure that the router will work as a gateway machine there is a there is a a uh, file in the proc area and remember proc is virt a virtual file system it really just exists in the computer's memory it's not like down on your physical hard disk and there is a guy in that system that has to do with IP forwarding if I can remember where that's at I it, this guy is a nightmare to find but it's down under proc whoop slash proc that's why it's documented here slash sys I think let's go over here I got to check it this is where it would be nice to have guest editions <laughs> installed so I could copy that over there slash network slash IPv4 I thought Oh, okay. There's all those guys. It is called IF IP forward. Okay, that can either be a one or a zero. If that is a zero, and that is a, at least until recently that has almost always been a zero by default on almost all Linux distributions or I think at least in the old days that was always zero <laughs> and you had to make that a one by just doing something like echo one which what that's going to uh, send the one down to IP forward oops I, I think that doesn't work because I need a space there but let's see what happens here there we go I need a space but and guess what that is still one Okay, this isn't such a big deal nowadays because a lot, uh, some distributions, at least uh, Red Hat and CentOS and Fedora, all of those make the, the default is uh, one. Um, but that did not used to be the case. And uh, I don't know if it is on all distributions. Now, I don't know what other distributions do. It doesn't usually usually I don't have to worry about it but anyway you can set that to one or um, or you can set it to one using um, the assist control command too that's a relatively new command I don't use that command very much but um, but yeah that that will work as well um, I think if you set it using that command it will set it every time it reboots otherwise you got to do something yourself to make sure that gets reset every time it reboots because remember that f whole file system under doc proc gets built as the system boots it's not a real file system down on your hard drive it's a real file system in your RAM okay um, now that seems like that should make everything work you should have a router you don't have a router <laughs> because what you have now is a system that looks a lot like this you have um, your client machines internal machines can go to the router 
and you would think they could get up here, but they can't because they've got the wrong address. To They're all talking on the internal address. To get to the outside world, you need to be on the external address. So you need some sort of piece of software that will convert the internal addresses to an external address, send it to the outside world, get the result back, translate that back into the internal address and send it back to your computer. The commands to do that are generally called IP tables or that command has changed names over the years. It used to be IP chains and it had some unpronounceable name before that. But but that system is IP tables or and IP tables now, actually, just to do IP masquerading, that's what they call that address translation, or they call it network address translation, or NAT. Um, the IP tables command to do that is really pretty simple. But IP tables is a pain in the neck. So the result is, is there's a lot of people who have written scripts and stuff that write your IP tables commands that do various things. Um, the ones that your textbook uses, the ones that um, Red Hat promotes uh, and Red Hat sponsored are called um, Firewall D. Um, and that's a system that writes IP tables commands using a um, command line system and a language that um, I wasn't too sure about, but the more I use it, the more I appreciate it. And actually, it's appreciated enough that <coughs> um, OpenSUSE, a number of other distributions have decided to adopt adapt that adopt that. In the case of ICP, in the case of OpenSUSE, I think that's telling because they had something called SUSE Firewall that was very good that they are they have dumped in favor of um, um, Firewall. D. So in any case, if you go in and you run these commands, um, a, a firewall D, one of the cool things about it is it c promotes the concept of zones. And zones is really what you want for firewalling. So um, IP tables has nothing to do with zones, except you build zones <laughs> using IP table commands. But firewall D has the concept of zones and you can um, firewall D command get get zones will get your zones for you um, uh, or get your default zones or your active zones um, if you have a particular zone you can list its um, um, credentials by or, or everything about it by using the um, uh, dash dash zone equal the name of the zone and then dash dash um, minus all. Um, you can um, and you can change the interface or associate an interface with the zone by using this command here. Now what you need to do when you set up a router is to use this command to set up the um, um, to set up your uh, in internal zone to the um, uh, to the proper connection and likewise the external zone to the proper connection so we see here where the ENP 0 s3 is set up going to the internal zone and the um, two lines down, we do the same thing. And it is uh, only in this case, we associate the external zone with EMP0S8. In other words, the one where the DHCP is going to the outside world. And, um, and then in each case, we make those permanent by typing in the same command with the dash dash permanent option, because just typing those in takes effect, but it doesn't store that in a file for reboots. 
when you use the dash dash permanent option that will make that permanent likewise um, what you need to do next is add the NAT or the masquerading to the external zone. If the external zone does masquerading, then everything will get routed to that zone. The address will get changed. It gets sent to the outside world. It gets the information back. It unchanges the address and sends it to the right computer. Um, this is just a query command to make sure <laughs> sometimes you can't remember whether you turn masquerading on or off. OK, um, if you type in all these commands, that will do your um, the, uh, masquerading for you. And set this up, and you will get some, a working system that looks something like this. So let's, we're getting way late on this, but let's take just a little look at what we've got here. I'm going to forget this computer. Um, maybe I will actually go into the computer and take it down. Don't know why I'm not typing in the addresses right. Shut down. We don't need this one. Oh. Yeah. Okay, now I have the other two computers running here. So uh, let's look at the... Zero 01 computer and the zero 02 computer. Okay, the zero 01 computer, if we look at that, that is the routing computer. So, oh, and I've got, um, Um, I, I've got um, um, Firefox running. I don't need it. And I happen to be, um, uh, remember I am root here, so I shouldn't type too much in as root. Actually, let, let me get up a, a, a new, a, a, a new um, window where I'm not root. Now, let's look at our IF config here. Notice what I've got here is two um, network cards one of which goes to the external world, one of which is for my internal network. Um, so from that, I should be able to ping to Google. And it gets my DHCP number and, you know, or I, I'm sorry, it gets the right network address and I get to wherever I want to go. Um, or I could SSH to um, my own server, 10.10, no, 10.0.0.12. Okay, and I could actually also go to, um, um, if I knew the address of the com hardware computer that I'm working on, I could go to that, I think. And I believe that address is 10.0.0.15. Actually, I know it is. I want to become... And 
Yeah, yeah, well, I can kind of see here. The name of that computer, it's a ThinkPad 01. So it's, it's my ThinkPad. OK. Likewise, I could go to the client computers. I don't, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure I've got a DHCP server going on that. So that would be dmantle at um, 192.168.0.2. Maybe I don't have a DHCP server going. Uh, oh, no, that's the wrong address, isn't it? I'm on a 10 address. I'm on. OK. So that's cool. Now, if I go to the client machine, oh, and well, maybe I should look around here a little bit. Let's go down to where I am root so I've got access to look at things. Let's go to um, etc slash um, sysconfig slash network scripts. OK, notice that I've got some network scripts here. Here's our network script for this guy. And that's the, that that is, well, that's the whole network script there. And Oh, I introduced some code here that I probably don't need, but um, but that's my network script. OK. And if I go in, uh, look at the one for um, the 8, there's what I put in for the 8. Maybe some of those got put in by default. Um, the big thing to notice is, oh, here it is. The device, ah, this is a big line to notice. Um, uh, these DNSs, uh, these are my the DNSs that I commonly use. They they belong to uh, Comcast. I um, I don't think I had to actually put those in. I did put them in because I was having a few problems because I did something really bad and dumb. But um, um, I don't think I needed the zone external. Um, I think, I don't know. I don't know how that got there. Because uh, I don't think I put that there. I think one of my, the commands I typed put that there. <laughs> of course, <laughs> isn't that always the case? Uh, OK, other things. Well, that's pretty much it. But then the proof in the pudding is let me go over to the other machine, the client machine, and just show you that it actually does work. OK, here's the client machine. I'm on the 02 machine, and I'm going to go SSH. Um, I don't know where to go. I could go to the server, or I could go just to the router, 192.168.10.1. There it is. It, it, it's there. Let's go all the way to the server. 10.0.0.12. OK, so if we go back and we look at our diagram, what we're doing here is we're sitting on this machine down here in the corner. 
we're going over the green network all the way over to the router. We are now then going from the router into the uh, the the cable modem switch, and from the cable modem switch, we're going down into a another machine that is sitting beside this machine that is a, a a server I have on the network or I could even go to a machine on the um, on the cloud by going to um, well I don't have a machine down there but I, I suppose what FT there's an FTP server Whew. FTP how about Oregon State University? It should have one, right? Anonymous? Guess what? I am now at OSU looking at um, their Debian stuff, looking at their public repository. What's on their public repository? Vector Linux, Ubuntu, uh, Teaching Source, uh, uh, Tails, Slackware. Okay. Uh, it's a lot of Linux stuff, actually. <laughs> I think they've got other stuff there, too. But um, um, but that's cool. Or I could use, I could start up a web browser and um, browse the web. Basically, everything is working. Um, which is 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 nice. Um, okay, going back here, and this is where I basically I've tried to keep this up to date. These are all the commands I've used, plus some commands I haven't used, and you will find in here a couple places where I have put down a lot of uh, or a number of recommended references. Here's some reference material in here to various websites I think are good. And there's some up above too. There's a total of probably, oh, here's a couple more sites that I think are good. Um, well, I, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good sites, but good for what we were doing. And um, I think that's, um, that's everything. Oh, and if you want a user interface to set addresses, that's the guy there, N-M-T-U-I. Uh, and that is on, I, I mean, of course, you can download it. You can load it into almost any distribution. But um, that comes with most of the distributions I use, I, I think. It's not the way I usually do things, so I'm not sure. But I think it comes with most of the distributions I use. And, you know, some people may like to use that, uh, as opposed to using um, ifconfig or uh, nmcli or ip. Okay, I guess that's it. Uh, sorry I took so long, but bye-bye.